All right, hey everybody, welcome. Today uh, we are gonna be talking about the neck, the muscles of your neck, the ligaments of your neck, the nerves of your neck, and the vagus nerve as it is in your neck, which are bilateral nerves going down the side of the left and the right side of your neck. So we're gonna t cover the anatomy of the neck, the structure, function, what can go wrong when the vagus nerve is being compressed in your neck. Not, not a lot of good things can happen when your vagus nerve is being pinched in the level of your neck and uh, talk about what some of the treatment options are. How do you fix a broken neck? How do you straighten a neck? How do you curve a neck in the right way, in the right direction? What are some of the places you can go? What are some of the tools you can use? We're gonna cover all of it right here on the call. Also, new shirt today. Let me know if you like the shirt. I kind of liked it. I like the color. It's a neat, good fit for me. So anyway, um, so today we're gonna be doing some presentation over the um, over our app Notability. So you're gonna be able to see visual representations of this video. Now, this is going to be a live call, but it's also recorded. So if you're unable to see the screen, worry not. This will be also be uploaded to our YouTube channel. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, we're trying to grow our YouTube channel. I think it'll be pretty popular because the vagus nerve is a pretty big area of discussion these days. So uh, great, uh, so let's get started. So first thing we're gonna do is gonna pop over on here. Uh, and look at our notability. So, um, all right, so the main area we're gonna be talking about today is everything as it concerns the atlas bone, the C1 vertebrae in your neck. So this is where, this is the big kahuna right here. That is your atlas bone, C1 vertebrae, and it sits just below your big heavy skull. It basically takes all the weight of your big ass brain and head, and your face, and your nose, and your lips, and your tongue, and all that weight is compacted right on the atlas bone. Now, if your atlas bone is healthy, it should sit structurally very upright, and it's in a, in a DO office, they're gonna call it orthogonal. So orthogonal atlas posture means that your, your atlas bone sits directly down and below in a perpendicular and parallel fashion to where it should be sitting. So if you're looking for general corrections, you want to be you want to have the vision, the aim, the outcome of reaching orthogonal locations of your atlas bone in all positions of movement. So if you move your head to the right, to the left, your atlas should move in accordance with where you're moving your head, okay? So uh, this is the C, I'll write C1 here, and we're also going to write the name of it, Atlas, okay? Atlas. My, I'm writing with my mouse, so it's not great, but it's good enough. So the, the C1 vertebrae is primarily the most important thing, but everything that surrounds it is also important. So your posture down here is important. You have C7 right here, and so you have C7 and it goes up into C1. And then the base of your skull is actually called the occiput or C0, okay? So this is generally what we're gonna cover. And now this is just the bone representation here. You'll only see bones here in the outline of some skin, but there's also muscles, ligaments, veins, uh, you know, arteries, nerves, lymphatic tissue, everything runs to this area. So this is a very tightly packed little tiny area that you have to make sure is working properly. And many know, raise your hand if you're watching, if you know what the downsides are of having a really messed up neck. I know the downsides of having a messed up neck personally because I've, I've been in a car accident, I've had whiplash, and I've had to deal personally with recorrecting my own neck at home, through chiropractic, through steroid injections in my spinal column because of the, the herniation of discs in my neck. So really, this is an area that's very close and personal to me. And I've seen not only in my life, but in family members' lives and in and, and people that I work with all around the world, just how much the neck really does impact vagus nerve function. So if you have, um, you're like, I have vagus nerve issues downstream, like my, I have gastroparesis, or maybe, maybe you have a rheumatoid arthritis, you have an inflammatory condition. That could be due to your neck being misaligned. So it's possible, but it's not the neck misalignment. It's the it's that the neck misalignment is impacting your vagus nerve most likely, and then that your vagus nerve being compressed by your neck is a 
is an upstream cause of the downstream issues. That's not to say, though, don't take this as me saying that um, that the most important thing in life is your neck because you can have other things that in, impact your vagus nerve too, just so we're clear. So if somebody tries to say the root cause of vagus nerve issues is the neck, that's wrong. And I know there are some professionals here on YouTube and Facebook who will say that. That's just categorically not true. If you look into uh, different people like Amy Prohl or, or Dr. Van L. Zacker, they talk about the vagus nerve infection hypothesis and that your vagus nerve can get impacted from the inside out. You could have the most perfect looking neck in the world and still have vagus nerve issues. So don't misrepresent this as me saying that the neck is the biggest problem, but it is a problem nowadays because we're all looking at our phones so much. So let's move on. So this is another uh, vision or view of the neck and how it relates to um, posture and, and, and the functionality or lack of functionality of the way your atlas bone is, sit it, is sit, uh, seating, seated or sitting in your, in your neck. So when you're looking down, there's so much pressure on your atlas bone and the muscles that sometimes the muscles can get so fatigued that they either lock up completely or they get so fatigued that they can't even hold any weight anymore. And so they just, they just lose all function. So you see people with heads just slumping down. And when your head slumps in that position, this picture, I would say this person's compressing their vagus nerve. And they can develop emotional issues. They can develop depression, anxiety, um, fatigue, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome can happen from this kind of posture. So yeah, it's 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 pretty important. So uh, let's look at some. What are some of the potentials? Like what are some of the descriptions of this? So we have a kind of a a, a good good common language to use here. So on the left, uh, going from the left to the right, you're going to see different head orientations. So resting head is right that's good if you have been in a car accident if your if your head has hit the steering wheel the windshield or the 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 uh, the inflatable airbag then your head would be an impact and so that's going to cause a kind of a this kind of posture right and if you do this you might notice like a clicking or a popping or that might even hurt for you so that's an indication that you need to keep on wa watching hyperextension can pull apart some of the vertebrae in the very front so we're looking right here in this area, uh, you can actually like really tear ligaments in the neck from that kind of a hyperextension. And then hyperflexion, um, that's another one that's really bad. This is one that I had, and it, it, it pinched the C6, C7 disc, the disc between C6 and C7. And the, it, there's a, the disc in your neck, the discs in your neck and your spine, um, they can get compressed and squeeze out the, the basically it's this gel-like substance inside. And that can irritate. It's very irritating in the neck. So you, what I had was weakness in my left arm from this car accident. But then I generally had just like my head and neck weren't sitting properly. And then I developed some different uh, autonomic issues from that. Clearly, I had some parasympathetic dysfunction at the time. So the, that's kind of like, these are some shared references that you can kind of pull upon. Now, if we look at kind of the upper cervical spine, just getting a little bit more close into this area, we can see just how much traffic goes through this location. So clearly right underneath your brain, um, underneath your C1 is part of your brain stem. So if you have dysfunction in the C1 and rotation and, and kinds of compression, then you can have brainstem compression, and that's going to cause you all kinds of issues. It can actually kind of pull down on your brain, um, and that's not healthy for anybody. There's such thing as a Chiari malformation, which is where your brain kind of starts to, your cerebellum starts to slump into the gap between your C1 and your C0, your occiput, and that's uncomfortable. If you have migraine headaches, it can be a result of a C1 being misaligned. Um, and so here, let's let's do a little, I'll do, do a red line here. So we're going to draw a red line over the atlas bone right here. Now, one thing you'll notice about the atlas bone in particular, and I'll zoom in here, is that the atlas bone, it you notice that it protrudes out a lot on both sides, right? It's actually pretty wide. It's almost, I call it like the shoulders of the atlas bone. They protrude out. They're, it's got a very broad shoulder uh, look. Now, if you look up here, what you're going to, what you're going to find here is the the stylo the hyloid process which is right here 
Now, this is kind of like a little bony protrusion that kind of sticks out. It's like a, it's like teeth almost coming out of your skull. It's kind of ridiculous that it exists. And some people can develop a condition called Eagle syndrome, where this bone tip gets, for whatever reason, the growth of this bone starts to, to grow. And so this actually will grow down, 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 down. And it can become really long, like vampire teeth. And that puts another zone of pressure on your on your neck. And that can be incredibly painful. That can cause vagus nerve issues too. So look for that. If you if you are experiencing like really weird symptoms of issues in your neck, then check out Eagles syndrome. So this might save one person's life if they have never heard of this before. But yeah, this um the the stylohyoid bone will just basically grow uncontrollably. It will calcify and extend down. So if you have an x-ray of your neck or an MRI of your head and neck, get it looked at again. Get a second opinion on that. Um, it's it's more common than I thought, right? It's not for, not everybody has it. I We are not going to sit here and say every case of dysfunction is, is Eagle syndrome related, but gosh, wouldn't you like to know? And the treatments are that you basically have to get it surgically cut back down and it can regrow if you get surgery. So anyway, that's a, that's a whole nother, that's a whole video in it, in and of itself, but it's something to look at. But looking back at the vagus nerve location, uh, if we change the color here to yellow, I'll just show you where the vagus nerve runs right here, right here. So vagus nerve runs right there, but it's going to be on the forward side. So it's going to be here and then it's going to, you know, behind and then it continues. Same thing here. So vagus nerve is going to come right out here and then go behind the atlas and then continue down. So I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, um, so this is really the the cruciality of the vagus nerve in relationship to the atlas is, is huge. I mean, I can't understate that. I can't overstate it enough. Um, so anyway, moving on. Um, some more pictures to reference the muscular uh, conditions in the neck. I think a lot of people just kind of forget how much just how densely packed the neck is and you got to make room for the muscles as well the muscles help you give like incredible survivability if you can move your head and neck around because humans are natural predators in a sense we're foraging creatures but we're also predators so we need to be able to track and and have motion with our head and neck but we also need to coordinate our vision our eyes our uh, vestibular ocular motor system needs to be able to move your head in one direction, but keep your eyes locked on one thing. So you'll typically see people with vagus nerve uh, and neck issues in general have sometimes difficulty maintaining eye contact when they move their head or their eyes don't kind of follow or match their vision. Now, some rehabilitation therapy that's done is actually going to have you keep your eyes locked with your head as it moves left or right you see my eyes are kind of staying straight then there's other therapies where you're, you'll move up and down and up and down it's called like eye saccades and you'll do this kind of thing you'll you'll move your eyes and your head and neck and that's almost like a treatment therapy but it's also a diagnostic so they'll do it to you to test your vestibular ocular motor network it's how your ears determine the rotation of your head so you know it's up or down how you have balance how you're able to coordinate that with your eyes and your head and your neck. So if you have neck issues with movement, then most likely something is happening here in the in the accessory nerve, which is the there's a nerve right next to your vagus nerve that controls the musculature of your neck. So if you have muscle neck issues, then it's almost easy to just go to the next to skip to the next beat and say there's probably also a corollary vagal nerve issue here as well so it's something to keep in mind now i'm this is not an anatomical like lesson i'm not i'm not asking you to remember any of these muscles you don't need to remember any of them other than a few main ones um the 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 muscles that sit right here at the base of your skull and connect to your atlas bone are really important those ones are difficult to strengthen now a big thing i'll say is that some of the best treatments are going to be making these muscles bigger and the only known way to sustainably make muscles more strong and bigger is to put them under some type of load 
some kind of controlled and sustained physical resistance load. And we'll be talking about that in a short bit here. Um, but just look at these muscles and notice that everything that's a darker red, pink gradient is muscle tissue. And anything that goes to white is ligament. So if you're looking at treatment of the neck and your treatment protocol is ligament strengthening or ligament surgery or injections with sugar water, prolotherapy, then you are strengthening a like maybe a 5 to 15% of the picture. And that can only do so much. And that just rigidifies these muscles. But you know how you also get strong muscles is you exercise. You know, people who go to the gym and lift weights, they are not, you know, they're not getting prolotherapy. They're they're getting real practical muscle improvements and a benefit of muscle strengthening is that muscle strength is anti-inflammatory. And so we don't know if prolotherapy can actually be causing more inflammation in the body. We don't know that, but we know that muscle strength, when you when you stretch and, and hold and put resistance on a muscle, it causes about seven different metabolic pathways to reduce inflammation in your brain and in your body. So muscle strengthening, given how much muscle there is to, to inflate with blood, um, is a way more practical form of of neck healing than any kind of surgery or or whatever so again i just want to also noti notify you of where is the atlas in this picture the atlas bone is right under the red here so you can see i'm drawing an outline over the atlas right here so you can see this big bone in relationship to the c2 c2 is right here right this is c1 right here see its shoulders do you see the shoulders that pop out on both sides that is a real risk for you if your atlas is misaligned if it's more forward or 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 rotated to one degree or the other because again i'll show, show you where your vagus nerve runs one more time your vagus nerve runs right down here right underneath um the atlas like right from here to here that's your well that's not exact but your vagus nerve is going to be coming like kind of out of that hole, going down here, and then down your neck. So vagus nerve comes out of this uh, jugular foramen hole, and there you go. It's it's right next to the atlas bone. So another picture, another representation here is this. You're going to see these bigger, smaller, and medium-sized muscles. So uh, sitting right between each vertebrae is going to be a small muscle right here. These are all muscles, right? There's a bigger muscle here. There's even ma more massive muscles. These ones, this is called the occipital triangle right here, from here to here to here, right? And that's your that's the bony protrusion of your atlas bone right there, right there. So that's the that's the point, that's the outside point of your atlas bone. That's the right side and then that's the left side. So your atlas bone is actually quite massive and pretty darn important for this all to work. So moving on, um, let's look at some of the reference uh, muscles that you'll be able to find yourself. So the two that you do need to know, the two that are really important, you'd be kind of dumb not to remember these. Um, first one is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And that's this one right here. This big old, big old muscle right here sits m more or less directly on top of your vagus nerve. Your vagus nerve runs a little bit like this from here to here. So here I'm going to, okay. So that's the sternocleidomastoid muscle right there. And your vagus nerve is going to be running about here, down, follows it for most of it, and then it travels right, right about there. So your sternocleidomastoid muscle runs a little bit counter, but almost exactly in the middle to your vagus nerve. So they cross a little bit like this. So if you're doing some kind of stimulation of the vagus nerve, if you know, you know, then the best place to, to do it is going to be really in the central location, right? Right here, about the size of a silver dollar, right on top of the sternocleidomastoid. Now, if you have a really weak neck, it's going to be more difficult because your sterno, your SCM muscle, the shorthand for sternocleidomastoid, S-C-M. Sterling Cooley mastoid, no, it's sternocleidomastoid, is going to be right here on your, the side of your neck, right here. Right? So you can kind of 
you can kind of see it protruding out when I when I turn my head. That muscle is going to be a great reference point for you to find the vagus nerve, but not necessarily up here or at the very bottom. You just have to right if it's your if you're a beginner, if you're kind of a phase one person, right here in the very middle, right where your right between your ear and your clavicle, your vagus nerve is going to be right under that big muscle, and so you can find it kind of by, you know, feeling around and feeling the muscle. Just put your hand there. And just kind of like maybe tilt your head to the side. Like try to try to contract the muscle right here. If you contract, you can feel it protruding out. It's it's pretty, it's an obvious muscle. It's big. Now, the other muscle that you need to know is the trapezius muscle. And so that connects to a similar area of your head, right? Right back here, or in the very back of your skull. And then the trapezius muscle is what is right here. So if you see people who lift weights a lot, they've got kind of a big trap muscle right here. This big muscle which you can kind of squeeze we'll have another picture of it too but your trap muscle is totally massive i mean it, it's it contributes a lot to to good or bad posture so if your trap muscle is strong you're going to be able to hold your head and neck up if your trap muscle is really weak then it's your head is going to be falling and causing more compression so these are the two important muscle reference groups to know um now let's keep on going so here on the left we're going to see Right, just another kind of reference shot of the the vagus nerve. So, let me do this. Actually, I want to try something. Um, just gonna see if I can maybe grab some of these pictures. Yeah, here we go. Um, all right, I'm gonna shrink this real time stuff here, folks. Um, all right, we're gonna grab this picture and we're gonna drag it down here. So you can see kind of a side-by-side -side of these two, okay? All right, why not? I'll present that later. Boop. Okay. Um, all right, so, th so l this is a pretty good side-to-side. -side. Relatively good, relatively close side-by-side, -side, if I kind of just align these up here, okay? So, all right, so if you cross-reference these two in your head, in your, in your mind, if you know that little trick where you can cross your eyes, like, put your eyes both together you can kind of align these two so let's see let's align let me see if I can align some of these things that would be good um what's a good place to align try this try try doing aligning with your eyes the mouth to the mouth same area okay if you cross your eyes Um, it's not letting me do that exactly, but try this. So cross your eyes and put these things on top of each other and you can kind of see what I'm saying, which is that maybe, Ooh, Oh, okay. I can just kind of hold these on top of each other. So you can generally see roughly more or less where these things align. So you'll see that the vagus nerve runs kind of more straight up and down and the sternocleidomastoid wraps around the side of the neck. You see that? So there's a wrapping effect of the sternocleidomastoid over the vagus nerve, and in that central location where they intersect is more or less where you're going to want to stimulate. Now, uh, these pictures are a little, they're obviously not the same exact reference, but that should be helpful. Um, and so just so you know as well, your vagus nerve runs on the left side and the right side. There's a left side vagus nerve and a right side vagus nerve. The picture on the left could be a little bit deceptive to someone who maybe this is your first time ever seeing this. Um, if it Look, if it's your first time ever seeing any of this information, it oftentimes takes people three or four or five exposures to this information for it to click. So if you're like, oh my God, I'm not following, then it's totally fine, right? Totally fine. Uh, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand this. I find that just repetition and re-exposure to the information just makes it secondhand. So don't worry about it if you're not following. But generally speaking, this is a rough kind of estimate estimate for most people of where this is going to be located. So anyway, moving on, let's look a little bit closer here into this kind of this region of where the vagus nerve exits and just how compressed the vagus nerve might be in this region of your skull. So these are two kind of side-by-side -side pictures just roughly demonstrating just what we're working with here. So these are kind of the same pictures side-by-side. -side. You can see the jugular vein, which is always represented by 
blue, and then you see these three nerves coming out. So you have the glossopharyngeal, the vagus, and the accessory nerve all coming out from the same hole. Now this hole right here, if I can just draw on, this hole right here is, is basically very tight. And if you have any pulling on the vagus nerve, it might even be pulling at the level of the brainstem because you see these little fingers that go in here. This is where your vagus nerve innervates in your pons, in your brainstem, in your medulla. Well, your pons is here, but your medulla oblongata is right here. And that's where the, you know, the nucleus tractus singularis is. And that's where all these ventral and dorsal motor nucleus, ve ventral tegmental area, a lot of complex stuff. But there's important machinery and, and computer stuff in there in your brainstem that you don't want to interrupt. You can't mess it up, right? So anyway, that's kind of what it looks like right as the vagus nerve goes into your skull, right through your skull, passes through a hole in your skull, and then connects to your brain stem. And then the atlas bone is just going to be right outside here. So your atlas bone is basically going to be right about here. So your atlas bone, if it was represented, is here touching all of these nerves. If your atlas bone is wonky, you are compressing not just your vagus nerve, your, your carotid artery, your jugular vein, your vagus nerve, your accessory nerve, and your glossopharyngeal nerve. You may lose the sense of taste, smell, voice, your, your neck. If you have your accessory nerve being pinched, then what's going to happen is that your accessory nerve, which controls the muscles, is going to be irritated. And then the accessory nerve on the side that's compressed gets tighter, which makes the at atlas bone rotate even further, which compresses the accessory nerve even more, which makes all the muscles go tight, which compresses the atlas bone on the nerve, and you get this really intense feedback loop. So if you have a little bit of just the initial jolt of miscorrection of pinching the atlas bone, we'll start a process that goes on. Oh, sorry, I need to mute this. Um, we'll go on and on and on to amplify the problem even further. So that's why the atlas bone is like, if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, it's horrible. So moving on, um, this is just on the side, a reference just again to remind you just how many places the vagus nerve goes. It goes to your lungs, your heart, your stomach, your liver, your kidneys, your intestines, your spleen. We've talked about the spleen a lot. Spleen's a really important vagal nerve pathway if you're looking for the anti-inflammatory effects of uh, the vagus nerve. The, that's where that's where I think that's not where I'm not going to say it counts the most, but it's it's up there. It's probably in the top five of the locations where your vagus nerve goes. But if your vagus nerve stops working, you may see problems throughout every single one of these locations. You may see problems just manifesting themselves in the intestines. So, uh, you know, if you're if you're like, oh, yeah, I only have issues in my intestines. I'm not I shouldn't be concerned about everything else. The only place that your vagus nerve can really fail catastrophically is either in your neck or your brain stem, or if you had a surgery in your throat or you were damaged or something like that. Um, you should be concerned that next on the list of dominoes to fall is going to be your kidneys, your stomach, your liver, your spleen, your lungs, your heart, and then every. I mean, we're not even talking about the 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 targets of the vagus nerve that are upper up and into your brain. So you can experience emotional issues and disassociation, identity disorder from vagus nerve issues, right? So it's a pretty important neck, but or a pretty important nerve in the in the body, and the neck is a very important location. Um, so anyway, this is a, this picture on the right here, just as a reference, is a practitioner with his arm grabbing the trapezius muscle. The trap muscle is basically from here down up here. I think I overdrew that a little bit here and then it kind of curves up here and then wraps up here and you can kind of see, let me draw that again, the outline of the trapezius muscle as it goes here, right? Good. That's a good picture. So you're going to have that trap muscle. It's a big muscle you can grab. Now, if you're trying to do kind of a test on someone, there is such thing as a, a trapezius test, a trap test. So what you want to do is prior to doing a vagus nerve practice is have someone else behind you grab and pinch the trap muscle and have them detect how tight it feels like sometimes muscles can feel really like tight and irritated and then sometimes muscles can relax and the trap muscle will respond by loosening 
if you do a proper vagus nerve specific exercise. So if you want to test the effectiveness of a vagus nerve therapy that you're trying, maybe you're trying gargling or, or humming or whatever, then you can squeeze that muscle and then before and after determine like, hey, besides how you feel, you can have someone objectively kind of just do a muscle test on that area. Now, it's not kinesiology muscle testing where you hold your arm out and people are doing this. And then, you know, there may be some validity to that kind of stuff. But that's not, this is a, this is not that. This is, this is, this is based, based on muscle tone from the accessory nerve, which runs right next to your vagus nerve. So you can kind of see if, the, if, if there's a surrogate corollary downstream positive effect to your therapy. And if nothing changes, then it may be that the, the therapy you're trying isn't, isn't as effective for you. Maybe you need to try something else. Or maybe you need to keep on doing it, right? Day one of therapy for the vagus nerve doesn't always work for everybody, right? Some, look, if it's, it's great if you get, right, you, you stimulate your vagus nerve and you get the effects immediately and you're fixed, you didn't have much of a problem in the first place, right? This is what I say, right? Because like people are like, give me, what's the best thing to do for your vagus nerve? And I'm like, I run a 20,000 person Facebook group. You think I can give one piece of advice that's going to cover all 20,000 of you? No way, Jose. Okay. It depends. It completely depends. And that's a very lawyer like answer, but it really does depend. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to blow hot air up your, up your, up, up where the sun don't shine. Um, and just try to tell you, Oh, just gargle or, Oh, just ground or whatever. Just, you know, it's different for everybody, but that's a good test to do the trap test. And if you want to read more about that, there's a great book by Stanley Rosenberg called, um, Un unlocking or accessing the healing power of the vagus nerve. It's, um, it's on our top recommended products page. Um, if you go to our website, vegashub.com, you can read our blog and you'll have all access to all the reading materials that you need for that. Um, so anyway, moving on and I will be getting to questions as well. So thanks everybody on the live video for asking your questions. Keep asking questions. I'm going to get to those just in a few moments. We only, only have a few more, uh, pages to go here. Right. So, um, so great. So let's talk about where do some of these neck issues come from? I would say that the biggest modern day manifestation of neck disorders is how we look at our phones. Um, if your head is upright, just like this, then the weight of your head on your neck is only about five, uh, is only about 12 pounds. But the further your head goes down, the more your head goes down like this, the more the, the, the counter lever weight of your head on your neck increases. So you can get up to 60 pounds of weight on your neck. So when you look at something like on the right, which is an iron neck, which is definitely one of my top, 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 top products for neck strengthening. I recommend it to all my clients, everybody, every, while I run a program that does, does cater to people using vagus nerve stimulation technology, like physical devices, um, we don't go without really addressing cervical instability as well. I find that if you, you can look like, let's take, let's take like Dr. Hauser caring medical for instance, right? He's a common, very, you guys will all, maybe all of you will go check him out. I think he's a great, highly intelligent individual. I think I will give him credit for being probably the greatest at fixing cervical neck instability, right? However, being great at one specific vertical does not come close to being 80 to getting a 80% a, a effectiveness in three different areas at the same time. So we do what we do in our program. What I do in, our, in my program is we do focus on the neck. Now we're not doing any surgeries on the neck. We're not doing prolotherapy, no needles involved. We're doing physical therapy approved and guided neck rehabilitation to strengthen these muscles in the neck. Right. At, and you do it at home with a simple device. Right. And you look at this and you say, well, I can't put that much weight on my neck. But it's like if you look at the left and you see just how much weight you're already probably putting on your neck by cervical instability, you're probably putting more weight on your neck by looking at your phone or looking down or having bad posture than what the iron neck could even put on your neck, uh, put on your head and neck. The iron neck, at least you're in an upright straight position and moving your head and neck around. And it's this disc is gliding with a common center of mass way more controlled you're thinking oh i can't do anything with my neck honey you're already putting at least if you have perfect posture at least 12 pounds 
that that band right there on the iron neck that's a 25 pound thing so just you tilting your head down just this much watch this is the difference by you tilting your head down this much you are literally putting that much pressure on your atlas bone and and i know many of you are probably doing this when you're eating or whatever so you're already doing some form of neck strength and you just have no guided process so again to compare and contrast you look at neck strengthening um i wouldn't you know is it the best thing in the planet i mean that's a that's a obviously subjective right um i think if you could go and put metal pieces in your neck and make sure your neck never moved again, that's like the hundred out of a hundred fix for neck issues, right? If I put titanium plates in your neck so you could never move your neck and your your atlas bone was locked into place, you would probably never have any cervical issues there. You're gonna have probably like other issues because of the, the amount of surgery you had on your neck, right? Um, but that's a hundred out of a hundred. Uh, uh, iron neck. Is between a 60 to 80 percent fix but if you start doing that combined with stimulating your vagus nerve effectively with an at-home process and you do something like working on gut dysbiosis and, and nutrition right we don't have to be you know we're not doing genetic testing to make sure you're eating the right foods but we're doing common like medically approved processes for what to eat 80 80 80 is equals a thousand in terms of points compared to even a hundred out of a hundred just in the neck so this is one component of that, right? Neck is a really important component. Um, so anyway, that's the iron neck, and that's the one that's the one I have, and I like it. Um, now, another thing to know is that your neck as well, if you're doing any kind of strengthening, can use cervical decompression. And I was a total skeptic about this tool specifically. This is the neck pillow. I'm sure many of you have seen it online or in like a, you know one of those smarter image magazines you read on a on a flight from from LA to, to New York, whatever, in your free time. And I was like, oh, that's total BS. But it, it actually works. It's actually a physically ther physical therapist tested and researched device that does improve cervical traction. Um, and it works really good. And it, it's a lot cheaper and it takes up a lot less space than a traction table, which I had a traction table. We had to get rid of it because it's just like taking up, you know, a huge chunk of the whole house where, where we are right now. Um, so this is, I think, better than a traction table. Um, I like them. I recommend them. I think you should be using this if you're doing neck strengthening or not. That's my personal opinion. So um, anyway, and then in terms of the last slide is just a review is if you want to get a good image of your atlas bone, an x-ray from the side from the front is going to be your best bet. Now, some of the places you can go to get kind of like, so here's what I would say. I would recommend against chiropractic adjustments that crack your neck anything that cracks or pops your neck suddenly is probably to be avoided right i don't mind it if it's your rib cage and they pop your you know a rib out of that's out of place or whatever that's probably fine although some people will be like that that totally destroyed my health i mean fair enough right um or your hips or whatever some of those things are more resilient look guys your neck is just a little bit too too crowded in this day and age to to be going down that route, okay? So there are two different kinds of cervical correction specialists that I know of that I think are good. There's going to be atlas orthogonal, atlas orthogonal, and if you just type in atlas orthogonal, uh, you can find them online. They're, they have clinics all over the world, and those are great places to go. They'll take x-rays, they'll make adjustments, and their whole goal is to get your atlas bone in orthogonal location. Remember that perpendicular, up and down, parallel location. Um, and that's what I have now, thanks to, in part, you know, going to Atlas Orthogonal, getting massage, using using neck traction, using a few, few different tools, iron neck, neck strengthening, all that kind of stuff um, has been really good. Um, and that's, you know, I'm, I, my doctor looked at me a couple months ago and said, you are literally perfectly orthogonal. You don't have one single degree up or down or left and right on your Atlas bone. And that wasn't the way it was back in 2017 when I started. Uh, seeing them so it can be fixed it takes work um, but I didn't have to spend the you know sixteen thousand dollars going and getting injections in my neck um, to fix that problem I fixed that mostly on my own with a little bit of guidance and you know did it did it just fine um, so anyway then on the right side we see just another reference shot of just just I want you to understand that the the neck is so massively composed 
of muscles. There are so many more muscles in your neck than you think. If I just zoom in here real quick, right? So there's large, medium, and small muscles. And I highly doubt that a needle is going to be able to cover every single one of these. And you're going to die trying to stick a needle into every single one of these ligaments, okay? And it's a complete crapshoot. If you, you know, when we talk about like needle therapy, I thought it was like this like very precise like, oh, we're going into this, injecting some some gel. Go look at what a prolotherapy treatment is. This guy is just jamming a fucking six inch needle and going boom, 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 boom. Dude, if I mean, it works for someone. My mom, my mom, I know personally, she had that surgery done or that procedure done. Um, and it helped. It definitely helped. She's got a cervical fusion in her neck. Um, but you know what she goes to now? Guess what she bought? She bought an iron neck. She used my iron neck and said, I want one for myself. So, and you know, even my partner, she's, she's going to physical therapy for, you know, her lower back and guess what she told she came home for one day and she said guess what thing the physical therapist has in in his office an iron neck hanging in the physical therapy office so physical therapists that work on the neck are now buying iron necks to go you know use it so i don't know what those are 150 250 dollars a session you can just get an iron neck yourself anyway just saying um anyway so there's there's a large variation of this and um and yeah, you know, if you got a whiplash or a neck injury or whatever, I would highly suspect that could be a root cause of why your vagus nerve is, is not working. And then a secondary thing to know is that even if you were to completely fix the cervical problems in your neck, right? You're like, oh, I have so much hope. I'm going to get my neck all tightened up with this sugar water. Um, Long-term compression of the vagus nerve is can be permanently damaging, okay? So if you... If you have been sitting on your leg for 10 years, you are not going to stand back up and take the pressure off and then be like, wow, my leg works perfectly now. That's not going to happen. You're going to have to then now, again, work on your vagus nerve specifically again. You're going to have to rehabilitate your vagus nerve. So just taking, you know, just fixing your neck is not the fix. It's one third of the full fix. It's at least one half of it. So you're 50% there, maybe. Now you have to still do the work, right? You still got to do the work. There's no shortcuts here. There's no magic pills. There's no magic needle that's going to fix all this. So anyway, having said all that, thanks so much for watching. This is the end of the video presentation with the on-screen reference shots. And now I'm just going to go back to, to my pretty old mug. And uh, there we go. So um, awesome. So I hope that was very helpful for everybody watching. Um, so yeah, let's do this. Let's go to uh, questions and answers. And I'm going to go to the Facebook audience and just read out some questions and see how we're doing. And also we have a ton of live viewers. So great to see y'all. Amazing. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. You do like my color of my shirt. I got, oh yeah, I like it. I love it. Um, um, awesome. So great. So yeah, I've got a couple people here who are getting prolotherapy. Um, we got a question here about gastroparesis, right? Wonder if my gastroparesis is caused by going to a chiropractor due to being on a car accident. I would say that since gastroparesis is a condition of enteric nervous system dysfunction, that it's 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 possible. I would say it depends, but it's definitely possible, hundred percent. I would have that looked at. I would probably get um, I would get X-rays. Um, the good thing about, okay, so there's, there's Atlas orthogonal and then there's NUCCA, N-U-C-C-A, similar type types of disciplines. They're not going to be cracking your neck or anything like that. Don't recommend cracking your neck. It can really mess things up, right? I'm not going to go. We had some huge upset with some chiropractors in our Facebook group because I mentioned a news article of a girl who got like paralyzed from a doctor cracking her neck. And they're like, that's not all chiropractors. I'm like, well, are we not allowed to share news? Like, I'm sorry, you're offended. That's your discipline. I mean, that's just what happens, right? Um, reduce harm. So anyway, yes, gastroparesis, totally possible. Um, uh, can it cause shocks and shoulders and numb throat? Absolutely. Um, totally. Okay, we got somebody with a bulging disc at C1, disc protrusion C3. Literally needed this, and we'll discuss with my PT person. Awesome, awesome, fantastic. Um, if the ligament is torn, it can't heal, right? I mean, not really. I mean, I think scar tissue will develop. 
so the ligament will become harder and tighter uh, in the future. But the only real very like ligament ligament work could take years, like three years. Muscle work can take a few months. So given the option, like I'm not saying put like a hundred pounds of pre like you see people who go to the gym and they can lift weights responsibly and have ligament like weakness, right? Um, and, and there can be risks to that, but that's usually what you see. Like, I don't know, some dumb guy who's cracked out on steroids, who is like lifting 450 pounds with his bicep. And they like, you can rip muscle and you can rip ligaments, but your muscles are more likely to go first. So anyway, that's probably scaring some of you. You're like, Oh my God, I don't like to hear the word ripping and tearing. But you know, some of the procedures for this, think about the, the needle. I mean, this is a guy just jamming a needle in repeatedly again and again. Probably, I would estimate, 70 stabs into your neck with a needle. They're hitting. I mean, you're probably doing more ligament uh, serration, cutting ligament, with a needle being repeatedly jammed into your neck than other things. I mean, obviously, if you had, you know, if you have a known case of a torn ligament that's really clean, ripped off, then there's certain cases where you need surgery. But you can have a partial tear of a ligament. It doesn't mean the whole thing is weak and your body can heal, right? So I, I totally believe that people are way more resilient to this. But again, disclaimer, I'm not your doctor. Don't take my advice. This is me giving guidance on some aspects of this. So be responsible. Um, and, you know, I take, I take zero responsibility for you with whatever you do, right? That's, that's on you. But you can be educated as to what is possible and what some of these therapies are realistically actually doing. Um, and I, I think it's a, I think it's a complete shame that these really expensive, costly therapies, uh, just are like, yeah, you have a neck issue and the fix is going to be right. Some kind of a surgical procedure. Um, when I found that I did all the surgery, I did all the cracking, I did all the whatever for the neck. But when I started strengthening the muscles in my neck, I no longer got the grinding. I no longer got the cracking, the, the, the scraping sound in my neck because I, I didn't do anything different. I used a cervical traction pillow like a little bit and I did muscle strengthening, muscle strengthening. And I used the iron neck. That's the tool I used. So fair enough. That's my, that's my story. Um, uh, yeah, I should use a different color with the nerve. Yeah, you're right. It, yellow doesn't show up so well in some of these programs. So I will try my best, but um, but most of the red I'm doing on the pictures is to just highlight certain areas, not to draw nerves. Um, very informative. Thank you. You're welcome. How does the doctor find the problem? Thank you. Totally depends, guys. I mean, you got to be specific. Um, but how does a doctor find a problem? Right? You look, you diagnose it. Like, how does a doctor, how does a mechanic find a problem with your car? They test specific different things. So your headlights are out. Is it the light bulb in your headlight or is it the wire going to the headlight? Like you're like, how do I, how do I know if my headlights aren't working because the headlamp is not working or the light or the nerves aren't working? I mean, you go to a doctor and you say, you go to a doctor and you tell them your specifics. I can't give you specifics. And remember, I run an, a 20,000 person Facebook group. So disclaimer, I'm trying to be as more as general as possible, but as specific as possible. So I can't ask, I cannot answer specific questions unless I have specifics, right? Um, what causes a clunking in your cervical all day when you turn neck? That lots of things, but it's usually your bones uh, rubbing against each other or the disc degeneration happening. But again, like I said, strengthen your muscles. Your muscles sit in between the the cer the cervical vertebrae. So if your if your muscles are really weak and old, then there's no space between your vertebrae. If you start strengthening those muscles. They start to get big. Notice people who go to the gym often. Have you noticed that their muscles kind of look bigger than somebody who doesn't, who's skinny and scrawny? The same thing can happen in your neck. And that's a good thing. You want cushioning in your neck in places that no needle or, or medicine or anything can go. The only thing that's going to save you long term, I'm talking long term. The only thing that's going to give you long term relief is you finding some safe, effective way to strengthen the muscles in your neck. That's it. No amount, you, you know, if you go to a ligament specific therapist, that is a hundred percent temporary fix. You're going to be back there in 16 months shelling out this same 16 grand to do the same process. Okay. Or maybe you'll get three years of relief, but you're going to have to go back. 
And if you're just sitting around on the sidelines hoping that this ligament thing will fix you for good and just sitting and not doing anything to strengthen your neck, you're going to be even worse off in three years. You know, the whole idea of use it or lose it applies to every part of your body. It applies to your brain. It applies to your vagus nerve. And it applies equally so, if not more, to your muscles. Just try sitting around for six months and not moving a bone, not moving a muscle. Look how, like, just you you know how you're going to look. You're going to be scrawny and skinny and weak. The same thing is going to happen to your neck. Your neck is not going to grow on its own, okay? And the your, the thing is, the fact is you're already strength, you are already putting pressure on your neck. If you're like, oh, I don't want to move my dainty little neck, my little de- neck muscles. You already are. If your head is up, guess how many of the muscles are working? All of them. There's a hundred uh, specifics. There's a hundred muscles from large, medium to small, all working, activating, holding your head up. So if you're like, oh, I don't want to use my muscles, it's like, because you're scared, you're already doing it. And you're probably putting way more unequal distribution of weight on your neck i'm saying balance that out strengthen the the head and neck muscles and another thing is i do primarily when i go to the gym i use the iron neck i pretty much only do two specific groups okay i exercise my neck with the iron neck and i do it in the the harness and i'm doing all these movements and if you know the iron neck you'll know how that looks and i'm at an advanced level of of iron neck usage and my neck is just like really girthy and it looks awesome. Um, and then I exercise my butt. I exercise my, my glute muscles, my hip muscles, my psoas muscles. Those are the two area groups I do. And that's it. I'm not doing a whole lot of stuff. And I have really good muscle development throughout my whole body because these muscles control the whole thing. And if your atlas bone is being ro- rotated and compressing your vagus nerve, you're not going to have the energy to do anything else in life. So... Neck is top priority. Neck is definitely top priority. And then I would say just from a, an aesthetic standpoint, a big neck looks good. A small neck is obvious and noticeable. If you have a tiny little dainty jawline or whatever, um, it doesn't look good. People don't trust you, okay? People will not look at you in a good way if you're walking around with this like little pencil neck. You're like, hmm I have an opinion on something. And your neck is like tiny little pencil, like smaller than this pen. People aren't going to... People are not going to listen to you, okay? So just a fact. And then having a big butt never hurt anybody. So anyway, um, all right, moving on. Um, do, 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 Hey, great, 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 great. Yeah, somebody mentioned the halo weights. I love those. I use those. Um, we have a practitioner license to be able to send those to our clients as well. So that's awesome. Big fan of that. Um, just got my atlas fixed through that. They say no exercise or stretching for eight weeks. Fair enough. While I go through treatment, however, I still have pain around ears and occipital ridge. Yeah, I mean, probably neck strengthening is going to be, I think, part of that process. Um, da, 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 we got, do, you can get something called dynamic mode, uh, dynamic movement x-rays um, to see how your neck moves up and down. I've seen those. They're great. Um, awesome. Awesome. Just reading some of the comments here. Never get manual manipulation. Agree. Atlas subluxation adjustment from my chiro specialist did aggressive manipulation and it was a wrong approach for a stressed out condition. Yeah. So if your, uh, yeah, if your if your neck is like really tight and you're trying to rip and turn and manipulate the neck heavily, there's so many issues that can come from that. It's really bad. Um, what does a diagnosis of straightening of the cervical lordosis mean for nerve dysfunction? Um, it it basically means that you're at high risk for vagus nerve dysfunction that's what it means it means there's there's a lot of statistics in this like if you took a statistics class you know that like if i if i have a six-sided die and i roll the die i have a one in six chance of running of of hitting any number right so if you're like does this mean that a hundred percent there's no such thing as a hundred percent uh causation in in really any of these things Uh, we're, we're what we're presenting is that given relatively rational thought, relatively rational explanations and some medical kind of experience and diagnoses here. We're looking at if you if you have neck problems, your right, it's like it, 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 let's take Los Angeles for instance, which has all kinds of congestion issues with the highways. Right? If there's a spill of an oil tanker on I-5 downtown Los Angeles, is that going to mean that Susan's going to be late for work by 2 hours? It's not a guarantee, but it's pretty likely, right? So if your vagus nerve is 
is right in the pathway, right in downtown central, and your va your atlas bone is rotated to one degree or the other, does that 100% mean that your vagus nerve is being pinched by your atlas bone? No, not at all. It's a roll of the dice. Um, and even your some nerves can be compressed, and you might not notice any of the symptoms, right? There are some people who have had their vagus nerve cut through surgery who just were never aware of that underlying function in their life, never needed it, never utilized it, and they're fine. But yeah, if you have neck cervical disabilities, then roll of the dice statistical, you're, you have an increased chance. That's, that's really how all medicine works, guys, is you have the genetics, genetic predisposition for one condition or another. That there's never a hundred percent you are going to develop this. It's genetics. It's it's a it's a roll of the dice. It's also based on how well you take care of yourself. Are you super stressed out? Do you take care of yourself? Do you do vagus nerve stimulation? If you do vagus nerve stimulation and you have a neck issue, you're gonna circumvent. You're gonna prevent the development of further degeneration of the of the vagus nerve. So, anyway, um, which is better for CI cervical instability? Neck orthogonal, if similar, either cheaper. I would say orthogonal is gonna be the best. Personally, I have the most experience with it, um, and they actually do a treatment on the neck with a kind of a kind of an ultrasound shockwave therapy thing that helps kind of loosen the atlas bone and lets it s like settle back into the right place. And that's atlas orthogonal. They have that kind of a tool. Um, I like it. So anyway, um, I'm here because of needles in my neck. Granted, it was Botox, but getting in that area didn't help. Neck pain ever since. Yeah, totally. Um, can you talk about popping, clicking, grinding happen in the upper cervical spine when rotating the head left and right? Um, so any of the discs that sit, so there's like, there's the bone and then there's a disc material that sits and helps things glide. Um, those areas over time will absorb nitrogen. And so they kind of create like little pockets of gas essentially. So when you crack and pop your neck, you're basically just popping, you're creating a little cavitation bubble and popping and releasing some of that nitrogen in the area. So I don't think that there's anything inherently wrong with popping or, or, or anything like that or cracking. It's not pleasant and it's definitely a sign that something's not perfect, right? It's, it's suboptimal, I think. Um, what I've noticed is that, so I go sometimes with like very consistent usage of the iron neck. I'm strengthening my muscles. And I'll notice for weeks on end after using it, if I'm on a vacation and I didn't bring my iron neck with me because, you know, it's a bit bulky. But, hey, if I ever had to flee the country, iron neck would be in my luggage, okay? I would take that with me, all right? Um, if lockdowns ever happen and I can't go to a massage therapist, I can't get to a therapist or anything like that, iron neck is going to be my saving grace, 100%. And I know that from experience because 2020 lockdowns happened. And if it weren't for the ability to strengthen my neck at home with that, um, I probably would have been absolutely miserable in lockdown. So I had that at home. I used it bungee system. You can use it at the gym or at home, whatever. So I like that. But yeah, popping, clicking, grinding uh, can be relieved completely with strengthening of those muscles in your neck. Um, and even though I had atlas orthogonal, it didn't necessarily like fix. Um, my hair is getting beautiful right now. Um, but yeah, it didn't necessarily fix all of those issues uh, particularly. I'm just making my hair worse. Anyway, um, I'm trying to look at myself in the mirror. Are they video feed here? Um, next question. Thank you for answering the question. I sure do think that's what's happening because the chiropractor cracked my neck and it was painful for weeks. It was 17 years ago and my gastroparesis is idiopathic. Also made my scoliosis worse. I've shrunk two inches off my height. You're very helpful with this information. Thank you. Um, absolutely. Um, just kind of discussed that you were able to correct this with, yeah, so I did cover that question, yeah. Um, you're very welcome. How often can you use the, the blow up traction device? Also, can I use it while doing an ultrasound therapy? No, because it covers your whole neck. So, um, for the, for the, the blow up neck traction device, I typically use that if I feel like I overdid it with my neck that day. Um, I use the, the blow up thing. Um, maybe like, uh, I don't know maybe every two weeks or so. Sometimes I'm going to the gym using the iron neck. I probably use the iron neck maybe two to three times a week. Um, and I am i don't think most of you will need to do iron neck two to three times a week. I probably do it like every 
two to three times a week because it looks great. I love I love how my neck looks when I'm doing neck strengthening, right? And I don't want to be walking around with a little, little tiny little pencil neck. And there's health benefits. There's social benefits to having a good neck and jawline and, and good shoulders. So that's I'm I'm totally narcissistic in that kind of way. Like I care about my appearance. So if it's purely for therapeutic uses, then you could probably go with a starter kit. And generally, you probably don't need to do more than once a week, once every two weeks. Um, if you start to notice that the grinding is coming back, then start to preempt it. So it's like use it, you know, d first first day of the month, day one, September 1st, use the iron neck. Then don't use it for a week. See if you're if you're the rubbing grinding kind of thing happens again and then that if that comes back then use it that same day or the next day then see how long of a break that gives you from the rubbing and the the crunching um, and then kind of start to set that as the um set that as the interval to know when to use it right so if you're like oh yeah you know i used it day one and then then the rubbing went away for eight days and then it came back on day nine start to use it at once a week right so circumvent that um, and I would say as well, from a muscle development standpoint, it usually takes about, um, three to six times the amount of effort to grow a muscle than it does to sustain a muscle once it's grown. So I'm sure many of you have probably not dabbled in neck strengthening unless you did football. If you played football in middle school or high school, if you had a coach who had, I had a coach in, 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 I think high school who had us doing neck strengthening exercises. Um, and so that was good. Um, uh, so, but yeah, I've been doing neck strengthening now for since 2020. Um, I started it during lockdowns during, I think it was gotta be like January, January, February, March, April or so of 2020, right. As lockdown stopped, I could not go to a physical therapist. I could not get a massage. I was basically in my Airbnb in California, beautiful Bay Area, Berkeley, California, and I, I received my iron neck and I started using it day one. I even have vi live videos of me using it, like showing it off, right? Um, and I think, honestly, everybody that's used the iron neck literally on day one has been able to make the determination that it's going to help them or not. And the Iron Neck has a 30-day return policy, so you can get it, try it, and send it back if you don't like it. So there's really no risk. Given the benefits I've seen, um, I think it's fantastic. I really, really think it's fantastic. So anyway, a couple of people are just asking for the code. This video is not sponsored, per se, by Iron Neck, but I will share an affiliate code. If you choose to use it, uh, you can save 15%. That's not the purpose of this call, or it's not the purpose of this presentation. But since people are asking, I will share it. Um, so that's the link to the Iron Neck. And then you can use code VNSR15 for 15% off. VNSR stands for Vagus Nerve Stimulation Repair 15% off. So you can use that code. I get a, I think I get a small commission for it. It's not bad, but... Um, whatever it, however you think about it if you want to use the affiliate code or not i don't really care it's not it's not where i make i'm not an influencer i'm not making my money off of sales of iron x it's great you know it's extra little pocket change or whatever so um but yeah um but w with or without an affiliate code i would still recommend it i really 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 do like it i'm probably going to go to the gym um if you check out my stories on my personal facebook account you'll see me at the gym later today in about an hour um and, and do that. Yeah. And yeah, look, if you can get 25% off, use that, do it like, um, and now just for people to know, there's three types of iron X. The only one you're going to, the only two you're going to consider between is the white starter or the black pro. The intermediate gray varsity version is intended for college and high school athletes to prevent them from getting whiplash. So don't even consider the varsity edition. That's not something you're going to want to buy at all. The only thing you need to consider is between the white starter and then the black version, which is the pro. I personally own the pro. The difference between the starter and the pro is that the starter has a disc that rotates freely and has no, you cannot add resistance 
to the rotation of your head, it'll only have resistance from the direction of the band. So you'll be like, you know, doing chin tucks and uh, having resistance against all sides of your head in equal directions. Um, the benefit to the pro is that as you get more advanced and you want to really cover like some of these deeper structures in the neck, you're, when you're starting to rotate your head, I actually like to add a little bit of that resistance. Like I, there's a little dial that you turn on the, on the band on the disc that slides and you can add a slight amount of resistance. You can go from like basically 0% to 5% to 100% resistance. And if you're at like 90% resistance, it's like there's the weight pulling here, but there's also this other kind of deeper resistance in the muscles in the neck. So if I would say like, generally speaking, if you're, if you're a, if you're a guy or a dude, um, you're probably going to want to go with the pro. If you're, if you're, um, you know, maybe going to dabble in neck strengthening, then you probably are going to be just fine with the starter. It's much more affordable. They have a great summer sale on right now for 25% off. If you want to support that, go for the iron neck on the website. If you want to support our group, then use the, use our affiliate code, whatever. I'll get like $30 or something like that. Just full disclosure. If you use that, if you use my code, I may get like 30 bucks. Fair enough. Um, and then another thing to consider is also the bands that you're going to get with it. You might want to consider getting, there's the blue band, the resistance band that comes with it. If you, if you are a gym member, I personally always prefer to take the iron neck to the gym so that I can use the weight systems. You know, the same ones where you have the pulley, the cable pulley systems, where you can actually clip that to the iron neck and you can use it at the gym with a complete perfect resistance at any direction away because when you're using a band like a resistance band resistance bands increase and decrease the longer or shorter that they get so there's not a super consistent resistance with a rubber band with a band that you're going to use at your home i have you know on my door here on the back of my door the clips that you clip into and so i can do it at home uh, but i uh, i prefer to go to the gym so you'll like i said you'll check my story here in, a, in another hour and you'll see me at the gym using the iron neck. So, um, so anyway, that is my recommendation. Now, another thing to consider is that we, in, so if you're in the Facebook group, you can search for red ball, red ball, R E D B A L L two different words. And you'll see that we have a full guidance PDF on how to do this with a, a $19 product, which is a red ball. And it does a lot of the same things that the iron neck does. It doesn't give you the ability to go to some of the more intermediate and advanced levels of neck strengthening. But for someone who just wants to try it out and doesn't want to invest a ton of cash into this, for $19, you can get an inflatable red ball that provides variable resistance, just like the iron neck. And you take that red ball and you put it against the wall. It's about a 10 inch diameter. You can get them. They're like dodgeballs or kickballs, the rubber ones that are inflatable. Um, and you make sure you have the pump the, if you search Red Ball in the Facebook group, you'll find plenty of guide guidance on that. All the resources, there's a Google Doc that's included there um, that will make that work. Um, yes, the, the question in the chat is, that, will the starter iron neck be the right one? I would believe, yes. Um, somebody, yeah, oh yeah, and then to continue, Red Ball for guidance on that. Um, we have a comment, clearly someone who's you know very pro prolotherapy, I love it. Needle therapy is using precise using ultrasound. When an expert knows where the ligament and tendons are, he uses a precise angle as well. Um, I would just recommend people to Google an actual procedure. It's not as precise as it's being led to be said. Okay. They also use x-ray, real-time x-ray. They may use ultrasound, but in some cases of prolotherapy, I've, I, 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 I'm, I, I trust my eyes, what I've seen. With, with from videos that this actual practitioner has put out on public and there are cases where they are going ch -ch 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 needle 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 at this speed in this many angles so it's not as precise in all cases now there may be times where they are going to a one specific ligament and being very precise i don't doubt that but there are definitely cases where they're just like boom 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 just got to fluidize this area get the prolotherapy in there so fair enough um, but yeah, it's, that's actual video footage. Maybe I should Google that myself and, and share it here. But if you just do the research, right. Um, so anyway, 
it is what it is. If if it works for you, that's fantastic. Don't let me don't let me hamper, you know, your fun. But what what I said also still applies, right? You may find some relief from it. My mom did too, but it didn't last and it's not permanent. And, you know, it's very costly to become dependent on that kind of procedure, right? So it's a lot of the idea of like give a person a fish and they'll eat for a day or 18 months or teach them to fish and they'll eat for a lifetime. Neck strengthening could be something you could do for ever. Now, the other thing, the other benefit here too is that the, the, the iron neck, the way that it's designed, the way that it's built and the, the injection molding of the, 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 the polymer material is like so strong that I feel like if I, if I took it and I smashed it on the ground, it wouldn't have a scratch on it. It is so well built. I feel like that iron neck is literally going to be a tool in my chest, in my tool chest, amongst many other things, but for probably the rest of my life. If, if not 15, 20 years from now, I'll still have that exact same one that I bought in 2020. So I think you can't do wrong with it. But Red Ball, totally. Not, guys, it, this is not a money thing. You know, we run a coaching program, so it's not about money here. It is about you getting access to the right tools. And look, Red Ball, we have another person in the comment, in our, actually in our program, has the Red Ball. Exercises are feeling so good on my neck. So I think it's important to do neck strengthening in whatever form you can handle. Whatever, whatever is in your budget, whatever makes sense to you go do it. Um, it's not to say that prolotherapy can't be part of your journey, but I just also know as now having done this Facebook group thing for a long time and having worked with people and having been a recipient of injections in my neck too, right? That I know which ones gave what I know which ones cost me thousands of dollars and I know which ones lasted, right? And the, the cheaper options actually, I think had more of a lasting impact. Um, and also, um, based on the timeline, so from 2010, when I had my disc bulge, so between, I believe it was C, C5, C6, and C7, between those vertebrae, there's two discs. So between C5 and C6, there's a disc. And between C6 and C7, there's a disc. Both of those discs bulged. And they're literally shown in x-rays and, and MRIs that those were leaking into a, and around my spinal column causing irritation and I had muscles that were just twitching like just twitching muscles from the irritation and my doctor my osteopathic doctor you know in San Francisco really expensive guy I mean one of the best in the world he's like yeah Sterling you know the fact is is that based on the the level of degeneration and damage and just impact from this accident this car accident is that probably at your young age very shortly you're going to have to have disc replacement surgery in your neck and we're probably going to have to fasten it with titanium that's what he told me and that was when i was about 24 25 years old like that's not right i think i was actually 23 or something like that um when that happened that's not something that should be happening at that age right i'm much more resilient and i can tell you i followed all the advice i did all the therapy we spent the tens of thousands of dollars on physical therapy but it never seemed to last i'm just saying hand to god i think that neck strengthening why isn't it being recommended up front it's so much safer it's so much safer it's so much more affordable it's so much cheaper than going the route of of, of that i get it i get it people got to pay for their third mortgage on their house they got to gas up their yacht so they gotta they gotta charge a hefty penny and they gotta have you come down to a certain place, um, and that is what it is, right? That's just the way of the world. And if it works for you, I'm so happy for you. However, don't let that take away from people who may not necessarily want to go that route. I'm not super big on surgery or needles, and given the like intense density of those nerves in the neck, like, geez, you know, that's a high traffic area. I'm not trying to have things stuck into my neck like that. Personally, that's me, but that's up to you. That's on you and that's your decision to make. I'm not here to debate it. Um, but anyway, I want to end here because I don't see any more questions. It's been a, an absolute pleasure to see you. Uh, for everybody watching, my name is Sterling Cooley. I run the Vegas Nerve Stimulation and Repair Group here on Facebook. Um, if you want to like and subscribe this video, 
uh, on YouTube, if you're watching there, would be more than happy to allow you to subscribe and you'll be alerted when new videos go live. We're going to be doing these live videos here just about three times per week. So if you want to discuss more and, and learn more about this, uh, we'll, we'll, we don't just cover the neck. We cover most things related to the vagus nerve, which is a pretty broad uh, area of discussion, granted, but it's fun, it's entertaining, and I really like doing it. If you, uh, if you want to reach out or whatever, you can send me a message on Facebook. That's probably the best way to reach me. Um, but other than that, if I love people who are just here to watch, to, to learn, to share, and all that stuff. So thanks, everybody, so much for the thanks in the chat. I appreciate each one of, one of you. I feel like this is a great call, a great video, and uh, I look forward to talking to all, all of you soon in some way, shape, or form. Thank you so much, and take care of yourself. And also check out my Facebook stories for the video of me doing the iron neck today. All right? Proof is in the pudding. All right, take care, everybody. Bye.